chalk money lines and profitable players here's some words and terminology you need to know to be a successful bookie let's get our learn on in another episode of power masterclass Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Power Masterclass. It's episode six. We're going over 10 terms you should know as a bookie. I'm going to repeat this again. It's as a bookie. A lot of people ask us, well, when you put up stuff on the website, how come you don't discuss, you know, uh, things like uh, spreads and money lines and, you know, what about you, you spread bets and parlays and that? Uh, no, 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 no. That's, that's, you know, that's more for the player. Um, we need to get some of you guys a little bit more acclimated, especially you newbies. Some of you guys are actually becoming bookies right out the gate in college. Pretty fucking impressive, um, which we, we have a special, you know, um, program for you guys as well. Um, but you really need to learn some of the terminology on the types of players and the types of betting and how to identify specific aspects of a play. All these little terms we're going to go over, we're going to go over in multiple segments and that's how we're going to get you acclimated. That's how we're going to get you trained as a powerful bookie, powerful bookies, powerful software, power paper head, but now we add powerful knowledge, right? And that's why these podcasts are out. Uh, if you notice, we don't sell a lot on these. We'll throw our name in in a, in a few. But it's more of a learning experience. That is, that's exactly what these podcasts should be. And so without uh, too much wait now, we're going to go into the first one. The first one is a really important term. Uh, as a bookie, you teach your better, you teach your player how to be responsible. And that term is bankroll management. Bankroll management is an aspect that's important on both sides of the fence, not just the player's side. It sits on the same side. Uh, it's well, not on the same side, but it sits in the same aspect for them. If you're going to teach your players, uh, well, you know, don't place bets that uh, you can't afford to lose. Well, you as a bookie need to know in bankroll management and when managing your bankroll, you should not be taking bets that you can't afford to pay out. It's very simple. So, much like managing a personal bank account, uh, betters should practice and and uh, bookies both. Uh, should practice proper bankroll management, um, setting wager limits with your players, um, you know, having them shop for the best odds, uh, wagering uh, or allowing wagers on only things that you can afford to pay out. Those are keys to properly managing your sports book budget, uh, even as a bookie, because you can't just go in there and be like, well, I have an unlimited budget. Well, are you, do you have $10 million that you just don't give a shit? So be careful with your bankroll management, uh, and we're going to go uh, right into the next one, which is chalk. Chalk is, um, it's pretty much the term for a favorite. Uh, let's say Los Angeles is the chalk side if the Lakers are a minus three point favorite over the Houston Rockets, right? So chalk is a favorite. That's basically where uh, the favorite team is. And then according and against that, you have usually what's called a chalk better. Chalk better is usually, uh, they only place bets on favorites um, with the majority of their wagers. They're not, you know, they're not huge risk takers. You know, they're not really like, okay, well, let me constantly bet on the fucking underdog. Uh, but yeah, uh, you have chalk and you have chalk better. Now we go into uh, the closing line. Those are the final betting odds posted prior. Again, the keywords prior to the start of a match or a competition. The next word is decimal odds, or next phrase or term, decimal odds. Now, decimal odds is more of a Europe, uh, European uh, terminology. Uh, decimal odds are part of the big three group. Um, it includes fractional and also the American odds. So a 1.91 decimal line 
equals a minus 110 in American odds and uh, 10 elevenths in fractional pricing or 10 over 11 in fractional pricing. All three formats, all three types of, um, of, the, of the odds are, <clears throat> um, they have the same, all three formats return a $100 profit on a winning 110 wager, right? So let's go back. That's all three of those. Doesn't matter if it's uh, if you call it decimal odds or or the line, you know, whatever it is. Um, any one of those returns a hundred dollars profit on a winning one ten wager, right? So the next word is a favorite. Um, that's any side. If you see on any betting slip or any screen or any betting odds or or any system, it's any side priced with a negative number. Uh, San Francisco, let's say. Um, uh, minus 360 would be the money line favorite over Arizona, uh, Arizona with a plus 280 in an NFL matchup, right? So it's any side priced with the negative number. Uh, but you're like, oh, positive means? No, it doesn't matter what positive means. Have a positive attitude and pay attention, all right? That's what a favorite is. Uh, next word is fixed odds. Right, so when a wager is placed and you as the bookie accept it, the line becomes the fixed odds. If a bet is placed on, uh, let's say, Las Vegas at uh, plus 3.5 odds and the line moves down to plus 3 prior to the game, before the game, uh, any of your players that purchase, the, uh, let's say, the Raiders at, at a plus 3.5 are going to retain that previously accepted fixed odd, right? Not for the bets that came in after, right? Not for the players that came in after. Uh, same thing, fixed odds also, by the way, is another term for money line odds, right? So, next word, hedge, right? Most common thing, you hear it in the stock market, you hear it in, in any sort of gambling. Well, betting, sports betting is pretty much gambling, so hedging or hedge is most common with parlay betting. It's more of a risk management tool. It's there to offset losses. You're hedging your bets. Or hedging a bet consists of betting on the opposite side of an original wager to set up a guaranteed return. A hedge bet may also be placed uh, to reduce the initial risk on a potential losing wager. We're going to go back to parlay betting. Um, hopefully, you know what parlay betting is. It's multiple games, so on and so forth. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, it's a great, great risk to reward ratio. Uh, but also in parlay betting, you know, all three of your, or let's say if you placed a bet on three games, uh, three game types. Uh, you know, uh, football, basketball, um, and ice hockey. All three of your picks have to win in order for you to win that parlay bet, right? So hedging is most commonly used with parlay betting, uh, and it's a risk management tool uh, that your players will, you know, probably use to hedge their bets. Um, the next term is in-play betting. In-play betting, or Power Paperheads version of VIP live betting, right, is... Is actually a great tool, by the way. Um, but wagers, they're, they're basically bets placed after an event has started. So it's, it's live. It's in-game. You can actually move the lines, too, during the game, right? You have that, you have that ability with Power Paper Head. Um, we'll give you some great tools in there. But in-play betting is a great way to, get, um, to bring bettors in during the game, as opposed to the very, very old-school traditional way of waiting, um, or, or sorry, um, just taking in all your bets before the game begins or the match begins, and that's it. So live betting, um, you can, as a, as a bookie or a bookmaker, you can post uh, multiple in-play betting options throughout uh, most of the major sporting events. Um, obviously, check out your panel. Talk to your rep at Power Paper Head. They'll help you get set up with VIP live betting. Uh, but yeah, uh, the next term we're going to get into is juice. Not the apple, orange, or pineapple, uh, preferably cranberry if uh, you know, you're not feeling so great. Juice is also known as the vigorish, right? It's, it's, basically, it's basically house wins, right? Juice is usually set by bookmakers or bookies. Uh, it's attached to the spread and total betting options. So if Minnesota was minus 3.5 or minus 110 versus Green Bay, uh, plus 3.5 minus 110 um, has a 110K, 110,000 wager on both sides. Bookmakers earn, or you as a bookie, you earn 10k profit just from the juice on the losing bets. Um, juice is very important, uh, but it's, an, it's a very important term. 
Um, there's a lot of other terms for it, vig, fee, whatever you want to call it. But it's juice. Um, stick to the word juice. Uh, the next word we're looking at is sharp. And when I say sharp, I mean sharp. Sharp pretty much, you know, like a knife, like a blade. That is literally a pro sports gambler. And that player uses vast resources to determine their wagers. I mean, when I say sharp, sharp literally means sharp. These guys are sharp, right? But sharp players um, usually don't go to sharp bookies, right? If you're going to be a sharp bookie and you're better than your players, then it's a different story. Pro betters, pro players, uh, they always shop around for the best prices. Uh, and they will usually bet on favorites or underdogs when they receive a really good value or a proper value, all right? And our last one is Steam. Sharp players love Steam. Um, good bookies love Steam action. Um, it's fun in games. You know, just don't fucking risk to, uh, don't accept too many bets. Don't accept anything you can't be out. But Steam, right? Steam, odds that change quickly, right? The odds can, ch well, odds can change quickly in anything you do in life, right? But Steam is the, Steam's the odds that change quickly, usually due to a large amount of betting action by sharp bettors or syndicates. Now, syndicates are usually groups of bettors, and we're not going to get into that in this episode because that's some, that's some heavy-duty fucking shit right there when you get into syndicates. But um, these, are, these are good. These are, this is the, well, with, with all jokes aside, these are the sharper terminologies. Look, we can teach you how to um, recognize all the betting types and blah, 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 and a standard bet, and this and that, and what's a parlay? No, we are teaching you terminology on the bookie side. That's our job. Our job is to create powerful bookies. Why do we want powerful bookies? Because, well, we want, we, we have powerful software, right? Powerful software, powerful bookies, power paperhead. This is the way we do it. That's all for this episode on this uh, uh, first episode on, on some uh, bookie terminology. Um, we're going to have multiple. We're going to get into a few. For those of you that are new, for those of, the, uh, for those of you that are the younglings, um, you know, we, we get a couple of guys, we get a lot of guys in college who are like, yeah, well, I'm a college bookie. Uh, what do I, well, this is where you start. You start with stuff like this, learn this terminology. Um, there's so many places where you can learn. And no matter where you learn, no matter how you pick up the information, it just matters on uh, that you retain it, you learn it, and you utilize it. Um, that's all we got for this episode. We are Power Paper Head. We help you as a powerful bookie. And if you're new to the game, we help you become a powerful bookie. So either which way, there's always power. So I don't know if you ask me, but those look like some good odds. And this is why we're the favorite. So see you on the next episode. Take care, guys.